Alrighty, welcome to a four on four team vintage cube draft, the finest of formats, where I'm gonna first pick an Animate Dead. I think it's actually a pretty clear pick. Animate Dead's one of the best black cards, and I'm even passing a Grief. I'm passing to, uh, I think this is actually, yeah, Gettys, uh, old school Florida player. So it's myself, Troll Ascetic, Team J Bro, and Mac, all the ringers battling against Gettys, Paul, not Chiond, a different Paul, the sandiest of dogs, and Sahakvik. So, I think our team is looking pretty good. We got a lot of the folks who cube a ton. And I'm going to pass Animate Dead. Hope that Gettys takes Grief over Pest Infestation. But either way, I'm, I'm happy taking Animate Dead. And hopefully Troll Ascetic gets the Pest Infestation third. Maybe Jace, though. Grief is one of the better cards in that pack, regardless. So after first picking Animate Dead, I think I'm going to second pick a Parallax Wave, which is not like the ideal one-two punch here. But... That's just the best card in the pack by a lot. I mean, Sylvan Library is good, but I don't really like Black Green all that much. Yeah, that's it. It's Parallax Wave. It's just those two cards, and I think Wave is stronger. So I'll take Parallax Wave here. Uh, I don't really know much about Sahakvik's predilections, but I'll take the Wave and either move away from one of these two cards, uh, if that's what it looks like I should do, or maybe play Black White, either one. All right, well, this pack has an Atali. It also has a Doomsday. I do like that one. Uh, Ulamog, Chromatic Star, Selfless Spirit, MVP in the Luris deck. But I think I just take a Tali because I've got this Animate Dead. If there was a really strong White Weenie card, like Solitude or Seasoned Dungeoneer or, you know, something even like Mother of Runes I would consider, something on the higher tier of White cards, I could see just taking that to go with Wave. But I think a Tali is just the best card here in terms of like speculation with Animate Dead. There really isn't much else here that I think would really tempt me away from that. So I'm leaning a little more towards the animate direction. But you know what? This could be one of those drafts that uh, has some twists and turns. We'll see. Well, this this isn't of much help here because there's an Imperial Seal, which is good in an animate deck. It's just kind of a weak card to take fourth. Corvald the Fake Cursed King is a new one I've been trying. I don't know how good that one is. There's also Gemstone Mine is just a fine fixer. Colonnade is a good land. I don't really want to take like Usher of the Fallen or Evolved Sleeper. Those cards are just too weak. I think I might just Imperial Seal. Again, not not something I'm super happy about. But yeah, these packs have just really not been that good. I mean, Gaia's Cradle is the best card now. There is a Decadent Dragon. I could basically ignore the Parallax Wave, which I'm pretty close to doing anyway. And then just take the Dragon in case I end up red-black. There's also just Mana Confluence, but I really don't. Love Mana Confluence that much. Lion Sash. Um, Glimmer Dart. Lava Dart's actually one that I've... Uh, Glimmer, Glimmer Lens and Lava Dart, rather. Lava Dart is one that I've actually kind of liked. I, I, that, that card is earning its spot here. Um, I guess I'll take the Dragon. I don't know. Pretty unhappy about that pick. And really not happy with how this draft is starting. It's just... I don't think I certainly could have taken Animated or Parallax Wave differently. It hasn't really been an opportunity to like jump into into green or anything and haven't really seen any blue cards so i don't really know what's going on all right well there's a gut true soul zealot and an oliphant oliphant's good with animate dead but i could draft a nice aggressive deck and gut can be very good in that deck it's one of the better cards i've seen so yeah I'll, i guess i'll probably take that over oliphant here passing up on nissa and tropical island of note dragon's rage channeler maybe whoa that's a late duress. Seventh pick. Okay, well, I'm going to take duress over Gorio's Vengeance. I, I do think Gorio's Vengeance is good, like with Emrakul, for, or sorry, uh, Itali. The, it's actually also good with Emrakul. Uh, Parallax Wave is getting binned at this point. But I think that duress is just too good and important of a card, and good in like, every deck. Okay, now there's Ophiomancer Vir and Virtue. So it appears that maybe black isn't being cut. It's just the packs weren't friendly towards it. I could take Vindicate. I think I'm going to take Ophiomancer. Ophiomancer with Gut sounds pretty good to me. So I think I like it a little more than Virtue in this particular instance. And now I'm going to pretty gladly take Robber of the Rich. With Gut, you really want two mana cards that can attack. So I'll take that over Loran, Shadow Spear, Cathar Commando. Some late white cards. But I guess we're looking pretty good for Rakdos. I could take Bizarre Baghdad here. I don't know how likely it is that I'll end up playing it. But it is a powerful card. And the anime decks can use it sometimes. Okay, there's an Ulamog, a Soul Cauldron, and a Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Honestly, and a Chromatic Star. I, I could see myself playing basically all of these cards. I kind of think it's Glint Sleeve Siphoner, given what I have right now. I want more two drops. Oh, Dockside Extortion is actually really, really good with Gut. 
So I think I'll take that, pass a really late colonnade and a Corvold. But I just want to fill up my 2-3 curve. And the uh, basically the Atali and the Bazaar, I probably will end up playing these cards. But I have a good red-black like mid-range deck, even without those, like Imperial Seal probably too. Like these are the three kind of reanimator, whoop, reanimator cards, Atali, Imperial Seal, and Bazaar. Everything else works just great in like a red-black mid-range deck. So just keeping in mind that depending on how the next pack goes, I, I won't necessarily be going heavy on the animates. Though, you know, if I open it in Tomb and, and, and whatnot, that's different. All right, so Lava Dart versus Pirate Spellbomb. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Spellbomb. It's actually pretty close. The reason I want to go with Spellbomb, and I'll take Talisman here, is because of Gut. Ooh, last pick, Rotting Registrar. I'll definitely play that card. So if you go turn one spell bomb, turn two gut, or turn two creature, turn three, you can attack and sack the spell bomb. And I think that's pretty good. All right, well, persist is not very good in my deck right now. K command's great. Obviously, I don't want to first pick any of these cards, but you know, this is where we're at. I think I will take either K command or one of these red cards, but honestly, it's probably just the K command. And then hope one of the red cards comes back. It's also like a walking ballista metamorph persist at all, consider. I think K command's pretty good. And now there's a skull clamp here. Skull clamp works nicely with Glint Sleeve Siphoner, Ophiomancer, not really with gut, <laughs> you know, kind of only. But also there's nothing else in the pack that is of the same power level. There's some good good lands, there's days. There's a sword of the meek, but yeah, this looks like a skull clamp opportunity. And then now it's Troll of Kaza Doom versus Deep Cavern Bat. I don't like passing memory lapse, but I will have to. This actually looks like a pretty good Deep Cavern Bat deck. You can clamp it. It's a two drop to attack with gut. And uh, you can get it back with Animate Dead or K Command. I mean, Troll's also really good. Troll with Animate Dead is a good combo. And if I get a Badlands, it becomes a red black fixer. Hmm. Having no mana fixing yet. I think I will take the Troll. Troll is a very strong card. So is Deep Cavern Bat, to be fair, but I kind of feel like I'm supposed to take the Troll here. Okay, so this pack, it's uh, kind of the classic decision. Dark Confidant versus a removal spell. There's a, both a Braid and Grasp, but I, I would take a Braid. I think, let's see, for removal, I've got Pyrite, Spellbomb, and K Command. I'm a little light on removal. Bob is really good, though. And I have Skull Clamp to kind of get myself out of it. And Gut. I think I'm just going to take the Bob. I, I know that I might end up heavier Reanimator, but... Ooh. But I think Bob is still good there. All right, there's a Luris. Hold on. Luris count. No, I can't do it. I, I don't I don't care about the Atali, but losing Troll, Gut, Ophiomancer, and Regisaur seems like it's a lot. On the other hand, I have a Skull Clamp Animate Dead deck. Hold on, hold on. So I would lose... These six cards. Wow, taking Deep Cavern Bat over Troll. <laughs> On the other hand, maybe I just take Unearth. I, there's also Mind Twist, but I hate Mind Twist Index without Acceleration. I think I'm just going to take the Luris, actually. Luris is just too strong of a card. I'm not necessarily going to uh, be looking to companion it. In fact, I'm not planning on doing that. But I think Luris, I've got a lot of two drops. I have Skull Clamp and Pirate Spell Bomb. It's just kind of a busted card. So why don't I just take that? If Unearth Wheels, I'll be happy. This pack has a lot of goods for me. So there's Life Death, Shallow Grave, Preacher, Bone Shards, Trespasser, Palantir. <laughs> Scrubland even has a bit of an application. Kind of brutal that I don't get to take more of this pack, though I might honestly get something back just by virtue of how many cards there are for me. I think I just take the Life Death. It gives me another more outs for reanimating Atali, and uh, I have some really good, good creatures to get back. And then now there's another Eldrazi, but I don't need that. There's Lingering Souls, which is pretty good with Bazaar. There's also Cursed Scroll, which is nice if you empty your hand. And just Gut really pays you off for having cheap artifacts and play to sacrifice. Mm, I don't care about the rest of the cards. Passing a late upheaval and Iconoclast and Endurance, but... So it goes... Uh, I think given this... I do have a bunch of ways to discard, so Lingering Souls would be nice. I think that the power level of Lingering Souls is high enough that I should do that. And now, wow, that's a late balance. And I love Samwise too, but I don't think I want Ashen Rider. I think I'd just rather have Collector Brutality as a removal slash discard slash everything else. Persist can get back. Not that much, honestly. I have all good legends. 
makes me want to just either metamorph or take nothing here. Well, like hate one of these cards, but I guess I, I don't really care about hating the shackles. I think I'm a little more likely to want a metamorph, but it's even then more of a sideboard card. And here there's a Dark Slick Shores, there's a Seething Song. Well, I don't really look like a Seething Song deck. I don't think a white blue green talisman matters. So the question is, do I take, do I hate the days or hate the Sword of the Meek or, or the Leyline Binding or do I take Seething Song or do I take Dark Slick Shores? I think I'm just going to hate the days. That card is, is quite strong. Oh, there's a red-black talisman, which isn't terrible. Deadly Dispute's also kind of interesting, though I don't think we're quite there on Deadly Dispute. I think I will just take red-black talisman, though Concealed Courtyard could also be good for Lingering Souls. Actually, I don't even love talismans in these decks. Let's just take the Courtyard. What did we see pack one? I guess I'm a little more likely to want to hate Dig Through Time. I'm not sure. Bayou, I like taking, like, black duels here. I don't care too much about passing a kite sail arsonist and wow shallow grave and graveyard trespasser both wield all right i'll take the shallow grave we could still be doing some good animate stuff here we've got another pack and the bizarre of baghdad does help shallow grave is pretty good with itali didn't get any of those eldrazi but i mean this still looks like a pretty good start here let's see uh all right i mean i guess i'll take a dark ritual my, my opens have been pretty bad so that definitely is going to hurt our chances there is a Windswept Teeth and a Sacred Foundry. Those don't do much. There's Grist, which I could play off Bayou, and Grist is really strong. But Dark Ritual as a way to speed things up seems like that's just going to be a better pick for me. Passing a Mystic Confluence. Oh, there's the Academy. And an Underworld Breach. <laughs> All these cards I love that I can't take. I guess I'm probably just taking Prismatic Vista here. There, There's a bunch of playables. There's like Ham, Arc Trail. I don't really think we're an Underworld Breach deck. And... Uh, Prismatic Vista looks looks pretty good. Help me splash these Lingering Souls. If Grist somehow comes back, I could splash that. And uh, I just think I need to get some more mana here. I'm still on the lookout for a red-black duel to search for with Troll of Khazadum. That would be pretty nice. Passing a Breach, I don't worry about. I'm not that worried about passing the Academy. I'm not... I wasn't like insanely far from Academy, I guess. If this was pack two, I could see trying to pivot, but even then, that would probably have been a stretch, and certainly I can't do that now. Okay, so this deck is okay. It's not great, but I think it's definitely okay. Okay, Flash and Comet. And a Wooded Foothills and stuff. I think I'll just take Comet here. I don't have, I just passed World Spine Worm. I don't have any blue fixing besides Vista. Comet, at least I have Concealed Courtyard, and I kind of already want to play Lingering Souls. Let's just take Comet here. Plus, Comet makes 1-1s one for Skullclap. Very important. Mm, this pack. Oof, another bad pack. Uh, there's a Red-White Land, which would be fine. There's a Gemstone Caverns, which, yeah, this would be a pretty good Gemstone Caverns deck, to be fair. Don't think Tundra helps me. Mind Collapse can be good in this kind of deck. You just... Curve out, it lets you trade a mountain for some tempo. Yeah, I guess I'm probably fine doing that. Oh, now there's a Blood Tithe Harvester and a Fire Covenant and a Bone Crusher. When it rains, it pours. I, I gotta take Blood Tithe. Blood Tithe with Skull Clamp, Blood Tithe with Luris, Blood Tithe with Gut. Like, these are all just fantastic combos. I think the, the Blood Tithe's gonna be great. Now there's Corpse Dance and Recurring Nightmare. Um, not the best Recurring Nightmare deck, because I only have the one. This is pick six one big thing, but I think it might be better than Corpse Dance, because I do have a lot of little creatures, which certainly makes it better. There's also Pyrokinesis, but I just took Mind Collapse, so I don't even know I'm going to play necessarily. Yeah, I, I think this actually could be a recurring Nightmare deck. I have a lot of creatures to go with it. Now I might just take Bonehorn Dracosaur. It is large. There's also Liliana, though. Liliana's pr pretty good. Dark Ritual. It's good with yeah, it's good with a lot of stuff I have. All right, I'll, I'll go with Liliana over Sinkhole, too. And wouldn't mind, like, one more decently sized creature or a red-black land. I guess I meant a bad lands, but I, I will take Black Leaf Cliffs. That's fine. I don't I don't care too much for Battle Ball. Okay, Bayou, I don't see a reason to play it. Probably cut the Mind Collapse just to start with. And then now I'm thinking of cutting this Bazaar. I just don't feel like this is really a Bazaar deck. Could be a Scrapwork Mutt deck. Recurring Nightmare Gruff Triplets is pretty good, but Gruff Triplets isn't particularly great with Shallow Grave. You end up with two 3-3s three because, you, you know, the first one doesn't actually die. Yeah, a Scrapwork Mutt actually sounds good. And then Academy Wield. 
really, really embarrassing for all involved, honestly. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm more prone to take Angrath's Rampage than Arc Trail, just because I've got some stuff that kills small things, so that can help kill something big. Ooh, Stalactite Stalker actually seems like it could be pretty good, too. I don't think I want Misha's Research Desk. All right, I mean, this actually... I think we cobbled together a nice deck. Oh, and Gra Grave Titan's a pretty nice finisher. So definitely have to cut some cards here, but I like where we're at. I'll take Crater Maker. Oh, I'll, I'll decide which of these. I've got to cut a million cards, so probably can cut Ophiomancer to start with. I guess Lingering Souls a three. Sideboard the Dockside Distortionist, especially if no one's taking Academy. Crater Maker. I do like Crater Maker with Luris. I will say that. Uh, I think Urtai is more likely to be good than Kitten. It's kind of close, though. And last pick, Drown in Zilok. All right, let's get to deck building. We've got an okay deck here. All right, so we're like five over here. Um, I guess we just start by cutting like probably Stalactite Stalker just on the weak side. Crater Maker. I do like Crater Maker with Lurus and Skull Clamp, so maybe, maybe I'll try to keep that one. Registrar, I feel like I can probably cut. I kind of want to cut Imperial Seal too. This deck's just not that good at reanimating. I've got Itali with Liliana and Collective Brutality and Blood Tithe and Scrapwork. What? Four ways to discard it? And then Animate Dead at Shallow Grave. Oh, I should just cut the Shallow Grave. I'm not doing that as much anymore either. Animate Dead and Life Death to get Itali back. Also, Itali's castable in this deck. I mean, I've got Dark Ritual. Also, I draw a lot of cards off Skull Clint, maybe. And I think that the Dragon is probably my second cut. And that leaves me with 16 land plus the Troll, which sadly doesn't get any other colors. Let's see. So how many planes? I just need one planes, I would imagine. One planes gives me three white sources for Ligurian Souls and Comet. Yeah, that's all right. Also, Ligurian Souls, I can just discard. I'll if for value to a couple of these things and just flash it back which i think is also decent okay so if i do this i'll have six seven eight nine ten black well that is plenty and six and eight red yeah that actually doesn't sound that doesn't sound too bad okay i mean this deck is i wish it was well a little better i, I wish it was either a little better at reanimating or had a little bit more disruption and just be a red black mid range deck. It's kind of splitting the difference in a way that I don't love, but I think that it's still better to play Itali, given that I already want to play Animate Dead and Life Death. Recurring Nightmare with Grave Titan Itali is good. It's also Recurring Nightmare, just cycling through these creatures could be good. And I have a troll. So yeah, this feels like a decent place to land. Well, I've got good news. I've got the worst deck on my team. Uh, this is a Mana Crypt. This is J Bro's deck. He's Red White Splash Time Walk. You love that. And Fractured Identity with like Mana Crypt, Spellbinder, Dungeoneer, Hero of Bladehold. Uh, ended up cutting the Bonehorde Dracosaur just to make red less. And a, a couple fetches, a couple duels. Look, Mana Crypt's J Bro's favorite card in the entire cube. I think it's his pick one, pack one, because he just drafts super assertive decks. And yeah, he's got Rabble Master, Sanguine Evangelist, Palantir. If J Bro draws Mana Crypt, he's just going to win a ton. Next up, we've got, uh, oh, wait, this is the, the wrong version, actually. Here, it, oh, there it is. Let me see, did he change it? Yep, there we go. Uh, this is Troll Aesthetics deck. This deck is a very nice blue-green deck. It's got a Bone Crusher because he's got basically a bunch of fixing, but he has Ancestral, Stern Scolding, Spell Pierce, Ponder, Mystical Tutor, Counterspell, Miscalculation, V-Click, Jace, Mystic Confluence, and a bunch of green threats plus Eternal Witness. I love decks like this. And then uh, Max got a nice one too. Two Moxes and a Time Twister with Fast Bond, uh, a Shieldred that's basically splashing his only black card, uh, Teferi Time Raveler, Narset, a bunch of other big Planeswalkers, and Memory Lapse and Remand, plus Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, this deck looks pretty sick. So I, I think I, I'm in good hands, but let's see if we can get two wins with my deck. That's going to be my goal. All right, let's get to round one. Alrighty, time for round one. Playing as Gettys here and... I mean, I'm going to keep this hand. I get to go, yeah, Vista into Swamp Duress, assuming I don't draw Swamp on turn one, and then turn two, Scrapwork Mutt, discarding, well, discarding Atali, actually, since Anime Dead was a great draw. I was, I was toss up between that and Lingering Souls. 
but I think it's pretty clear that I'm going to do this. Turn turn three Atali after turn one Duress is pretty nice. Hopefully I don't miss on the Duress here. Holds a possibility. More so against a green deck. Okay, Court of Garenbrig, Time Walk, and a Walking Ballista to play here. So if I take, let's say I'll take a card, pass, Gettys goes turn two Ballista, I go turn three Scrapwork Mutt. He can play turn three Court of Garenbrig, and then I attack, take the thing. No, there's just no reason to leave him with Court of Garenbrig. It's just way too risky. The problem is Court of Garenbrig walking Ballista is so nuts, where the Ballista gets two counters and then doubles. Like, if he's able to maintain initiative, like, imagine if he draws, you know, another play here, or if just something goes wrong. Because as, as it stands, I could attack with the Mutt on turn three and take the initiative. Maybe he doesn't block. But then if my Atali misses and he puts two counters on Ballista, bounces Atali, shoots the thing, it just, it goes just completely haywire. Whereas Time Warp, that's just not going to do anything for a while here. So I don't feel too bad about it. Island and Ballista. All right, and then I am going to scrap work Mutterino here. I would have liked to draw a Dark Ritual. That would have been sick. But scrap work Mutt plays. Discard Itali. Draw a card. And then on my next turn, I'm going to animate dead the Itali and... That might be enough just to win. I mean, we'll see. If Gettys has drawn two cards since, but the other three cards I know just aren't particularly strong. So this is a turn where he could have played Court of Garenbrig, but I'm kind of glad he didn't. And do I attack first? No, let's just animate first. Maybe I'll hit something with haste. Hopefully this doesn't get countered. I mean, this is looking like a pretty good start. My deck looks pretty real when I do this. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. All right, Itali, let's go. Itali flips Crater Hoof and Pyrite Spell Bomb. All right, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll I guess I'll take a Crater Hoof. It it doesn't give Itali haste and he can kill the Scrapwork Mutt in response here, which I would assume he's going to do. Really? All right. If you really want your ballista that badly, I suppose that's fine. Attack with these two. And I'm left with a 5/5 a 6-7 and a Scrapwork Mutt in play. Not a whole lot that my opponent can do about this. Uh, I will accept that I didn't play a land this turn. I suppose if Gettys had like, I don't know, an end of turn play into a land, Mox, Time Warp, we could be doing something, but no. Not so much, and uh, got game one. All right, blue-green tempo, huh? Oh... Uh... In general, Ophiomancer is good against that kind of deck. Same with Mind Collapse. Is there something I want to take out? Duress seems okay. He's, if he's blue-green, he's got a decent amount of spells. Like the K command still. Click Brutality is slightly on the weak side. Maybe I take out Crater Maker for Ophiomancer. And let's head back in. All right. Game two. On the draw this time. Well, I was actually on the draw last time too, so <laughs> on the draw still. And... It doesn't get a whole lot better than that hand last game. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. Against a blue-green deck, Dark Confidant's pretty good. And, you know, if it survives, things will be totally fine. Plus, now if I draw Dark Ritual, I just have a turn four Grave Titan, which is also fairly effective against blue-green. Oh, Lotus. This could be this could be rough. Let's see what get lo gets lotus out here. There's not a whole lot that I'll be able to beat, honestly, if it's... If it's anything reasonable at all. Any four mana play. Yeah, even Oracle is going to be tough. Though, if he misses on Oracle a few times, it might not be the end of the world. I don't really have too many good one mana plays. Let's just play Black Cleave Cliffs. Pass the turn. All right. If you miss on lands, if you just have another weak spell on top, like Elvish Mystic is not the strongest. So... Hopefully that, that is the top card. There's a Crater Hoof on top. Okay. Well, that's a threat if Gettys gets to lands, which hopefully he does not. He has Elf and two other cards in hand. I mean, I still think I'm very dead here. But honestly, if I drew a removal spell that could kill the Oracle this turn, then I would feel like I was in decent shape. Because he's down to two cards plus an Elvish Mystic in hand. And 
It's possible he can't do too much. Oh, Court of Garenbrig. Yeah, that is a problem. Liliana of the Vale, huh? Um, and his top card's now Cradle and his Elvish Mystic. Let's go Dark Confidant. I would. I need to draw some extra cards here. So Oracle's going to become a 6-6 right away here. Court of Garenbrig's a nice one. You draw a Cradle. And top card's a Thieving Skydiver. Okay, that's kind of a brick. And his hand is Elvish Mystic, Crater Hoof, Gaia's Cradle, and one unknown. So there's a chance. Yeah, I'm going to take it, go to 12 here. If he plays Elvish Mystic, I attack back, he blocks, and then I Liliana him. I actually could be... I mean, he's got, he'll still have the Monarch as the problem. I need to draw a one-mana spell. I don't have very many that can do something. His Ulamog is on the top. All right, what did I reveal here? Revealed Lingering Souls. Um, let's send with the Dark Confidant. Try to become the Monarch. Hand of Thieving Skydiver, Crater Hoof, and still the one unknown. Oh, so now I am the Monarch. Well, in that case, I can't Liliana now because it doesn't kill the Oracle. But what I can do is I can play Lingering Souls so I can maintain the Monarchy. You draw Ulamog. I draw end of turn. Not land on top, please. Just draw, have another, I guess, expensive card. All right. So he gets to Garenbrig up. Probably the Elvish Mystic up to a 3-3 three, because three, you're going to force a double chump. And it's, he's at... Okay, Tamio's on top, a blue card, great. So his hand is, I think, all uncastables. Uh, again, there's a one card we don't know, but currently this is six mana, can't cast Crater Hoof. And then on my turn, I'm going to get to cast Comet or potentially Liliana. No, that doesn't really make sense either. All right, well, I've got a block here. Maintain the Monarchy. I think that's better because he. Re I really can't have Gettys playing another spell here. Otherwise, I'm basically dead. Time to reveal an Atali. <laughs> if I draw an Animate Dead, I can also go Scrapwork Mutt, Animate Dead, Grave Titan. If I draw Dark Ritual, I can Ritual it out. I revealed Planes. Nice. So Angrass Rampage could kill the Elvish Mystic. And that sets up for Liliana. But I can just do that next turn anyway. So I think I'm just going to play Comet and just hope to not roll, <laughs> not roll a 3. Anything else but a 3 is actually decent. And if I roll a six, that, that's that's the money. All right, six, let's go. All right, I rolled a seven, or I rolled a one or two, rather. But that's okay, too, because now I can still double chump. And if Gettys misses on lands one more time, all right, draw Tamio, don't hit a land. I have to discard to hand size. Uh, I guess there's no real reason to discard Grave Titan. I think I'll just discard planes. Because I can get into the graveyard if I need to. All right, not land, not land, not land. You get to put some counters on. That's fine. This is the last turn I need him to miss. It was a lot of turns. He got really unlucky to lose this. Oh, he missed. It's Grim Monolith. That's just not going to do it. Because next turn I get to kill both of his creatures. I get to make him sack and then make him sack again. And then he's drawing Grim Monolith. Doesn't have Oracle in play. And his hand is all uncastables. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> Is Getty's going to tilt off? Uh, I would tilt off a little bit, too, to be honest. It would be an agonizing game to play from his perspective. I do think, though, he made one really... Not, I'm not going to say mistake, but a, a, he had one really big choice this game. And the choice was whether to block Dark Confidant with Elvish Mystic. Had he done so, he would have kept the Monarchy, though I would have gotten to Lily on the Oracle. On the other hand, he could have also just not attacked with Oracle and just left it back so I... So I couldn't attack. So I think that was actually the play. All right. Well, double chumping here. And I guess we roll Comet first. Though maybe I Angrath's Rampage first. Let's see. Let's see what Bob reveals. I really hope I don't. All right. Eight. So I can't die to Bob. And I even got a Skull Clamp there. So if I roll and I deal seven damage, that's fine. But I'm going to cast this first. Because if I, if I roll a, a three, I want something to get back. You're gonna sack probably Elvish Mystic. It would. I don't think you can. You're supposed to sack Oracle there. Plus Comet. See what we got here. I'm dealing seven. All right. Well, in that case, I'll just deal seven to the Oracle land, and I could start Liliana. No, but if I Liliana plus one, he can discard Ulamog and get a reshuffle, 
which I don't really want to have happen. I could flash back Lingering Souls. I could Skull Clamp up the Bob, but I don't really think... I don't really think that's super exciting. Also, if I play Skull Clamp, it opens up the door to Thieving Skydiver getting me. So let's just go... I might just play Recurring Nightmare, honestly, and then next turn I can put a Grave Titan into play, and that also gets the Bob off the board. All right. Let's do that. You're going to draw and play Grim Monolith. And I can't kill the Grim Monolith, but he's going to choose no, no targets for this. Grim still doesn't really get you that close to Crater Hoof. You're still pretty far away. And then on my turn, I'm going to Comet again. And I guess it would be nice to find K Command to kill the Grim Monolith. But, you know, if I, do, if I don't, it's not a big deal. And revealing here, I can't die. I hit Lurus. All right, let's roll here. See if I'm saving all my sixes for, for when I really need it. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess I'll nug you for five. Hmm. Um, how do I want to do this? I guess Liliana plus one Liliana. And this way I'm going to get a Grave Titan into play here. It's also possible... If he discards something that I really want to reanimate, I could do that. Though he's probably just discarding Ulamog, honestly. Because that'll that'll get him Lotus back. Oh, he discarded the Tamiya. Okay. Lotus back in the deck, rather. It wasn't it wasn't guaranteed by any stretch. All right. Oh, well, actually, hold on. Let me attack first. And I think we're actually in really good shape here. I didn't find a way to kill the Grim Monolith, but there's not that much he could have that's super dangerous. He could have a... Time Warp is a card, or just any blue card could be the last card that I don't know. Uh, it's a recurring Nightmare, Grave Titan, Sacking Bob. I just can't, I can't have Bob in play at the end of this turn. And then make two zombies. And I suppose I just play Lurus here, I think. Just put get another creature into play. And this also, this way also, if he somehow gets like a Crater Hoof attacking me, I have like infinite ground blockers plus lifelink. So... I don't think it's uh I don't think it's very likely we lose the game at this point. Oh, there's an Itali. Next turn I could even do some Italian if I wanted to. I can plus one Lily, animate dead Itali, recurring nightmare, you know, do some some amount of that stuff. But uh I think this is gonna be game here. Whoa, didn't think we were winning that. And this just goes to show you that Oracle is just not what it used to be. He loaded it out turn one. <laughs> it never hit. And that's not to say that Oracle could not, you know, always hit before or anything like that. But name another four drop in cube that he could Lotus out that I wouldn't have lost to. I guess maybe Tamiyo. But even Tamiyo, you just get back to Lotus and cast something else. Like Questing Beast, Ovenwald Oddity. God forbid we talk about Caves of Chaos Adventure or Seasoned Engineer or Undermountain Adventure. Those are just no chance. Chase the Mind Sculptor, even, even Jace at this point. Like almost every card in the cube that costs four mana would have ended the game and Oracle just was left unchecked there. I didn't kill Oracle until like turn five when I went Angrass Rampage Liliana. I went turn four Comet, then turn five is when I killed it. So yeah, that's a tough place to be. Whew, and we are up a match here. Got one. Nice. A great start. Let's get to round two. Alrighty, time for round two. I'm playing against uh, Red Black Sneak, Paul. PJK. I'll do PJK so you don't think I'm talking about Chian. Uh, I'm going to mull this on the draw. Just all three drops on the draw is just not really an acceptable thing to do in cube. Oh, this is a much better hand. I'm going to keep this and I think put the Crater Maker back. It's just the weakest of my draws here. And I think my plan, well, it was going to be to go two drop into Gut. In fact, it was potentially going to be Ritual 2-2 two, two drops on turn 2, but unsurprisingly, Gut got gutted. Let's just pass. I don't really need to Ritual out of Scrapwork Mutt here. And I do have a Robber of the Rich, which is nice. If my opponent doesn't play too much this turn, then I might be able to rob them. All right, they have four cards. So that means I wouldn't be able to rob this turn except yeah, I'll just I'll just run it. Dark ritual. Scrapwork mutt. And I guess discard a mountain because I have more double 
black card, I have Liliana, and then I can play the Robber of the Rich, and now I'll actually get to steal a card with Robber when I attack, which I think is worth doing. Yeah, I got an Ashen Rider off the top of their deck when they would have drawn it and been able to Blood Fountain it into the graveyard, so that is something. Okay, they went and got Oliphant. I don't have any action right now. Obviously, if I got to play a Gut next turn, that would be sick, but maybe I could draw, I don't know, an Animate Spell, Alluras, a lot of things that would be good at this moment in time. Also, if if Paul here doesn't have a way to stop the Robber of the Rich, I can get another bite at that apple, and who knows what could happen then. So, not the worst position to be in. Obviously, when you mulligan and get thought seized, you don't really have super high expectations for the game, but I, I think this is this is could be a lot worse. It, it'll really depend on what's gonna ha what happens this turn, since we know that uh, PJ over here has got a mountain from that Oliphant. They could animate the Oliphant, at which point I would be hoping to draw a removal spell, I guess. They could be using a blood token here, maybe digging for something. Like, I just need them to kind of misfire. Okay, reanimate on the Oliphant. All right. I mean, if I draw Liliana here or Angrath's Rampage, that's just a huge beating. Oh, animate dead is also pretty sick. Yeah, because I can animate the troll or I could just animate gut. And honestly, gut is just that good. So I just go animate on gut and then attack with the scrapwork mutt and then sacrifice it to turn into a 4-1 menace and and now the Oliphant can't block it you go to six I'm threatening lethal next turn and then I even uh, have a troll to cycle if I drew a second animate but Really, it's just going to be, can you kill Gut this turn? All right, discarding. Oh, that's not a fatty. So that's not setting up reanimate. That's just a desperation dig. Did we get there off just playing some crappy two drops and animating Gut? Yes, we did. And that, that is why we put Gut in our deck. All right, well, playing against Red Black, Dockside would actually be pretty good against Blood Fountain. Hmm. Animate Dead is, is the nuts in this matchup. They, they have Reanimate too, so it's kind of similar, but I will put a Metamorph in the deck. That that I definitely like. Crater Maker looks less enticing. I like all the discard. Don't think Pirate Spell is fantastic. Lingering Souls is just fine. Pirate I'm going to keep because they had. I, I know they do have Dothy Voidwalker. I think the Decadent Dragon could be good. It's a little slow. Uh, is there one other card I want to cut? I don't want to cut Angress Rampage. I think the Robber's fine. I could cut Recurring Nightmare. This Usually this matchup won't come down to that sort of thing. I, I expect it to be things to go a little faster. All right. Well, Metamorph is in. And this hand... Oh, this hand's nice. Turn 1 Duress, turn 2 Glint Sleeve to maybe start getting some card draw that way. Or potentially Robber, depending on kind of what it looks like. And I'll get to know a decent amount because I'll, I'll have a turn one duress to start out with. So I don't, I don't, I don't mind this hand at all. This hand is actually quite good. And I feel like if my opponent's tanking, maybe they're going to mold a six. They don't have a thought seize. I duress their animate. Yeah, yeah. Every everything's turning up Rakdos. I guess it's kind of going to turn up Rakdos in this matchup because we're both playing Rakdos. Though they they've got some blue cards or at least islands that I saw in uh, their first match against Troll Aesthetic, and I've got a couple white cards. So that is decent. We're doing well so far. Uh, I won round one, Mac won round one, Troll won round one, Jaybro won round one. That's a 4-0 start. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. All right, I will keep, and my opponent did keep seven, so maybe it was a complicated hand of some kind. Hmm, I see. Turn on Mox, smart, can't duress it now. Collective Brutality could be a decent follow-up, depending on what I see here. Blood Fountain Sneak, Reanimate Grief. Oh, you can't reanimate Grief on turn one because you don't have black mana. Interesting. I'm considering taking Sneak here. If they don't draw black, they can't do the reanimate Grief thing. But also, if they do reanimate Grief, my hand is just five different two drops. Two of which kill Grief. They could take both those. Then I play Siphoner. I'm gonna take the sneak. I feel like, I feel like this is the highest upside play, and if they don't draw swamp exactly this turn, I can see why they tanked on keeping. By the way, this hand is uh, quite dependent on drawing a black source. 
Though I think that there was a decent argument that they could have griefed on turn one just in case I had a discard spell. Though, of course, I did draw a discard spell. I just didn't take the, the, the reanimate because I had collective brutality. And more than that, I just have a bunch of cards I could play. And I'm worried about sneak with three lands. It just feels like they have a lot of outs to win if they get a sneak into play. Whereas I can beat a, I can even beat a double grief here, in my opinion. And they do the swamp. Yeah. So they, they're going to take Collective Brutality now, I imagine. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Draw. Mountain. Let's go Glint Sleeve Siphoner. And they have Island is the only card in their hand right now that I know. Well, it's just the only card in their hand before their draw step. All right. I go to 17. Hopefully they don't have a follow-up here. Oh, no. Eh, all right. Name sticker goblin. Well, they would have gotten to cast the sneak. Ooh, a skull clamp? That's not bad either. So let's go robber of the rich. Skull clamp. Attack with the siphoner. Next turn, I'm going to block name sticker goblin with robber of the rich. Because at this point, I want to preserve my life total a little bit. Because I've got so much card draw coming. So I just get to block there, I go to 14. Assuming they don't do anything here, I go to 13 on my upkeep. Wow, more plays. Into Preacher? Okay, uh, let's draw. I still think I'm doing okay here, but obviously if they just draw a great spell every turn, I am going to lose. All right, and let's Skull Clamp. I think I Skull Clamp the Mutt. Yeah. Okay, Liliana, interesting. Let's hit and then I'm just gonna skull clamp the glint sleeve. I'm not getting another card out of this with his ability. And then skull clamp this. Okay, K command is not bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by attacking I I made them make a one one instead of draw a card, which I think is okay. Alright, they missed one turn. Okay. Now now I can do some some takedowns here. How do I want to do this? I think I'm going to K command. I do want to get back a card. I kind of do. Let's go Pirate Spellbomb and pass. And I think I might just get Itali back to my hand here. So I'm going to eat. So they're going to draw an extra card off that Preacher. Alternatively, I guess I could kill Preacher. Do I want to kill Preacher or... So I'm at 8 and they're at 12, so we're going to draw a card. I kind of want to kill Grief and the Vampire token with Pirate Spellbomb plus K Command. And then I can try to Liliana the, the Preacher here. Alternatively, I could kill the Preacher by using both of those effects. But then the Liliana is a lot worse. So they're currently going to draw a card off that. So I think I'm going to go K Command. I think I'm actually not going to get back the Atali. Destroy the pearl. No, no. I'll return a creature and deal two damage. So let's... I actually think maybe I should just return... Hmm. Because it's kind of close. Because I can go Liliana next turn and still play one of these idiots and then... And then Skull Clamp it. I'm just going to get back at Tali, I think. And then deal two damage to Grief. And then let them attack me. And I think I'm just going to kill the 1-1 one, one since I'm going to kill that anyway. All right, I go to 6 here. They have a couple cards in hand. They have 3 now. And I'm really hoping they don't have like a good play this turn. I feel like I could use one more turn off here. Okay, they didn't play anything. I drew a Blood Tithe. Nice. So let's go Liliana. Can you sack a creature? Nice. Blood Tithe down. Or... Preacher down, play Blood Tithe, and then let's go ahead and Skull Clamp the Blood Tithe in case something bad happens to it. Next turn, I can just cast a Tali. Oof. All right, all right. Well, they hit immediately on Swamp and then into random 2-2, two -two into Preacher, but then they missed for a few turns, and that that's a pretty big difference. Uh-oh, five mana. What do they got? Oh, Dothy Voidwalker? Oh, they just had the, the double black for that? Oh, that's not really going to do it. Um... How do I want to start this? I kind of want to start by playing Atali, which kind of makes me want to make 
each player discard. Do I want to go to five here? I think I go. Is it worth going to five for the off chance of casting Comet? Probably not. It's plus one. Discard Prismatic Vista. Discard Island. Land. Cast a Tali here. Hit Oliphant and Life Death. So I'm definitely casting Oliphant. And then do I want to cast Life Death? I don't know if I want to take damage to put something into play. I don't think I'm going to. And then I'm just going to kill the Voidwalker. I don't get to draw a card, sadly. But this obviously is just enough to win. There's just no point in taking extra damage here. And I think... We might be 2-0 in a second here. Yes, we are. They just bounced right away, and we are 2-0. Didn't think this deck had it in it, but you know what? I will take it. Let's see how the team is doing. We might not get a third round here. I got to warn you. All righty. Time for round three. We're 2-0. We're up 5-1, to one, so we do get a third round. Nice, nice. Uh, would like to take it down here. Playing against Sahakvik, who is on a Lutri companion deck, but most importantly on a channel for the Orlingus deck, but you know what? This is a turn one troll of Kazadoom. We take those. Ritual, oh, we don't need to do that. Ritual, cycle troll, animate dead. And then, sadly, I don't have a scrub land to get to enable Lingering Souls, but if I draw a white to cast Lingering Souls or a discard outlet, then I have Lingering Souls Recurring Nightmare as a potential kind of backup plan if a turn one 5-5 five, five unblockable doesn't get the job done, which, yeah, it might. Obviously, there's a lot of things that can answer it, but I do like that start, so I'm certainly going to go for it. All right, Swamp, Ritual, Swamp Cycle. Sadly, just get a Swamp, but animate the troll. All right, boom, new troll here. Let's see if uh, we've got answers. Good against channel. Whack them a few times with the troll, and the channel gets much less effective. And, oh, they Sahakvik also mulliganed once as well, because they're on seven cards total. I didn't, didn't even quite notice that. Okay, no plays on turn one, it looks like. Can I get a Blood Tithe? Oh, no, they're main phase crop rotating. Hmm, what you getting? Strip mine would be a little tough okay, when you're facing down a 5-5. Five -five, setting both players back a turn isn't really what you want to do. Maze of Ith would be annoying. Oh, Liliana is great. Liliana is a great piece of interaction that also combines well with Lingering Souls. Crop rotating is a painful way to get your Xander's Lounge, but you know, you got, got to do what you got to do. And hopefully the play is like a Sylvan Caryatid or something here, that kind of thing, not a way to kill my troll. Oh, it was a way to kill my troll and then gets back. Oh, Lotus Field, Bolus of Citadel. Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some things going on there. Well, the good news is I can get back my troll soon enough. I'm going to play Liliana here, and I'm going to plus one. Discard Lingering Souls. It would have been nice to duress a turn last turn, but I think duress will still likely be good in a turn or two here. I don't think my opponent's that likely to be completely out of spells by then. But we will see. Talisman into the Lotus Field, because that's what they got back. All right, well... Time to duress first and then Liliana, I think. Two cards only in hand. Yeah, it's still, I think, worth it because if if it works, I get all their cards. So let's go duress. Well, take Minsk and Boo, land, play Recurring Nightmare, and then plus Liliana to take your last land. All right, this has been a pretty sick game. I've had a great draw, but they've had some pretty good ways to battle it. I mean, Witherbloom is a really good way to stop Animate dead. Ooh, not topping on upkeep. I don't think I agree with that play, though, because if you draw a card you can't cast this turn on your draw step, which maybe they did, then the Liliana just gets to eat it for free. That's that's pretty rough. So topping on upkeep to just play a land and pass with no cards in hand or find a three drop. Both of those seem a little better. I guess if your deck has tons of four mana plays, then it, it could make sense to do it that way. Well, or you just drew a land anyway. <laughs> but I don't think it was a good play. Uh... Let's go land plus one Liliana. Now I'm threatening Lily Ult, which is pretty nice. And I get to go Lingering Souls, bring back Troll. And I even get to replay the, the Recurring Nightmare. 
All right, I feel like my deck's kind of humming. You got your discarded Lingering Souls with no white mana to recast it, Recurring Nightmare to get back my troll. The whole troll animate thing was pretty nice. I mean, you got to have something pretty good here to, to beat a recurring troll plus a spirit while also getting Liliana ulted and basically kind of going to force you to keep Lotus Field or the other three cards. So either way, you get to destroy like a couple mana sources, which I think is nice. Mm, let's see. Do you have an answer to Liliana Council's Judgment or something? Oh, Crucible of Worlds. Okay. Replay Xander's Lounge. Sure. Draw... Let's hit for seven here, and I think I'm just going to play Pyrite Spellbomb and then plus Liliana again. Well, what if I minus Liliana? What, what would my piles be? Crucible, I could kill those three, those four, leave you with these three. Yeah, I'm going to win next turn probably, so I think I'm just going to do this. I think it's worth it. So I want a pile of... Lotus Field, let's see, Xander's Lounge versus those. So then you either keep four mana and nothing else and your Crucible goes away or you keep two mana top and Crucible. Yeah, that sounds fine. It seems like it would be pretty difficult to win with those with either of those piles. Crucible basically counts as a mana, so it's like three mana versus four mana. And yeah, they, they, they can't do it. All right. Uh, next game, I do think I want Rotting Regisaur. And still don't know about Dockside exactly. I'm also maybe a little more into Imperial Seal. Like, am I supposed to try to make my deck more of a combo deck? I mean, I like most of the cards I have here. I could see not playing Crater Maker. I just kind of like Regisaur because it just attacks for a lot. <laughs> I don't know, it's just kind of a beating. There's also Imperial Seal, but I just don't think I have a very good Imperial Seal deck. Like, I could put an Imperial Seal in Shallow Grave and try to be more on that plan. And maybe that's what I need to do on the draw against, like, a combo deck. Like, this Pirate Spellbomb doesn't seem like it does too much. I know I have Luris, but... Yeah, maybe... maybe. And then the, the Regisaur also helps with this plan. And I think I might just take the Luris out. It's just not looking like a grindy game, so... I'm going to try this. Maybe I actually want Mind Collapse. No, I should bring that in because of Minsk and Boo specifically. It does kill well, either of them, <laughs> but not both because that card's busted. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got to keep this hand. It's not it's not a fantastic hand, but th this deck is not good enough to mulligan a hand like this. I've had decks where I would consider mulliganing this kind of hand where it's like, I've got two Moxes and I've got an Entomb and a Vamp Tutor and a Reanimate and like you could get a more busted hand, but... This deck is just like not that deck. You're not that guy. If you've never seen The Expanse, that's a great show. And, and the You're Not That Guy clip is, is really good. I, I, won't, I won't spoil it, but well worth watching. Even if you look it up on YouTube, if you don't mind spoilers, I, I think it's a good one. So I drew an anime dead, which is nice. Uh, not nice enough to discard Grave Titan on turn one to hand size. Oh, there's an Atali. Okay, well... Now my Bob is way less risk. And also, if I draw any discard outlet, now I can just put an Atali into play. I, I hope I'm not getting Witherbloom commanded, but I kind of feel like it would be it would be tough to pass up killing Skull Clamp on turn two if you did have the Witherbloom command. So the odds that Bob lives aren't they can't be terrible. My opponent's deck did not look like a deck that had like an abundance of interaction. When you have Channel, Bolus, Citadel, Lotus Field, Crucible in your deck, you, you just don't have like a million ways to deal with the opponent's permanence. It's kind of hard to. All right, well, there's the Lotus Field. And balance. Wow. Okay, well, it's actually going to work out really badly for my opponent. They just don't know it yet. Because I'm now going to discard an Atali and just animate it next turn. So it was... I mean, balance was sick. It was a three-for-one, except discarding Atali was uh, very good for me, so... Let's go ahead and do this. Animate dead, Itali. All right, what do we got? Bolus of Citadel and Comet? Yeah, that's probably going to be enough. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's play Lingering Souls. Let's activate Comet. It'd be so sick if I rolled a six now. <laughs> um, I 
don't really want any of these cards. I guess I'll take a Prismatic Vista back. But <laughs> it's pretty irrelevant because with Volsa Citadel out, I'm just going to be playing a land off the Citadel anyway. But I also don't think getting Dark Confidant back in my hand accomplishes a whole lot since the odds that I play that are very close to zero. Wow, the Vespian stage. Lotus Field, I mean, that's cool. It's probably not going to work out here. Play my mountain. All right, but now I can... Let's just start with Comet here. Okay, and then let's... Skull Clamp a Squirrel to clear him at the top of for Bolus's Citadel. Oh, Recurring Nightmare. Interesting. All right, I'll go to 10 and play Recurring Nightmare. And Shallow Grave. Um, one mana short of discarding Grave Titan. What, do I have Lethal? I think I almost... Wait, one, one, two, three, four. Oh, I just... I have Lethal here, so let's let's do that. Let's try to win the game. Actually, I'll, I'll play Shallow Grave, too. Oh, I should have played Robber of the Rich, but whatever. Because now I just get to use Bolus' Citadel the way Garfield intended and nug my opponent for for a million. Um, Let's just pass the turn. And I assume they're going to use Lotus Field on stage here. And I guess Stifle's the one card I could lose to, which now that now I can't. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The cheese stands alone here. All right, boom. And <laughs> that was a 3 0. <laughs> Did not expect this deck to 3 0, but we will take it. And that is the draft as well. I mean, let's take a look at this deck. Honestly, it just has no, no acceleration except one dark ritual. The animate plan is like. A Grave Titan and a Tali, an Animate Dead and a Life Death with and a Recurring Nightmare, I guess, with a couple discard outlets, but like no Entomb. I, the only tutor I have on the sideboard, I just don't think it's quite good enough. Not like a ton of removal. It's just like a medium beats, medium reanimate, medium mid-range deck. But you know, when the things line up, it works out. And uh, wow, that was a 3 I Can't argue with that. <laughs> That'll do it for today. A very satisfying draft. Gut even got to kind of show how, how good this card is as well. I appreciate you hanging out, watching me draft Reanimator. I will be back tomorrow with another draft. And uh, coming up soon, the Murders at Karlov Manor release. So be on the lookout for that. I'll be jamming some of those as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.